Good morning, it's the Daily Quiz, episode 86 on training. Training is the toughest of the major sections for most people to get a 65% or higher in. It's December 20, no, it's December 30th, 2025. I'm your host, John Nucleus. It's an ASP, CSP, CHST, SMP, and OSHT. So let's get into it. Safety professional notices an increase in near-miss incidents involving a new piece of equipment. Before committing time and resources to develop a training program, management asked whether the training is actually required or if another control would be more effective. What should the safety professional do first to determine whether a training program is necessary? A. Conduct a training need assessment. B. Evaluation the qualifications of potential trainers. C. Design the training program and lesson plans. D. Develop specific learning objectives. First, we're going to do a training needs assessment. We always do the needs assessment before the objectives, the lesson plan, or trainer section because training may not be the solution for these new pieces of equipment. Maybe it's guarding. So we have to start there and take a look at it. Employee profession must deliver annual refresher training to an experienced employees. Working multiple shifts at different locations, the training content is standardized, does not require hands-on practice. Management asks which delivery method would be most effective while minimizing disruption to operations. Instructor-led classroom training to best encourage group discussion. B, on-the-job training led by supervisors during production hours. C, apprenticeship-based training focusing on skill demonstration or online e-learning training that allows self-paced flexible access and the answer is online e-learning that allows self-paced flexible access good for policies and procedures like we have to cover this topic every year because the state requires us to do it or the company requires it or OSHA requires it um, again regulatory awareness annual fresher training these are often things where they've got the experience you just need to cover it <clears throat> Again, structured training much be better when you have to demonstrate lockout, respirator fit tests, rigging inspections, and you want to try to help change behavior, and you're going to coach or discuss issues while they're doing the training, and you've got to give immediate feedback. And again, if those kind of elements aren't in the scenario, typically not going to be the right answer on the exam. Okay, number 35, the company wants to improve its overall safety culture by focusing on characteristics such as attitude, motivation, leadership, and personal responsibility rather than teaching specific jobs, tasks, or procedures. Which training approach is being described? A, task-based training that focuses on step-by-step -step job procedures. B, knowledge-based training focused on regulations and standards. Trait-based training that develops personal characteristics including safe behavior. D, skill training that emphasizes hands-on equipment options or operations. And it is trait training that develops personal characteristics influencing safe behavior. This one and other topics of non-safety tasks are starting to come up in the test. So this has been, uh, been a frequent question. You know, you're given a choice of behavior-based observation, situational leadership, trait training. you got to know all of them because they're, they're kind of, depending on which question you get, different answer. So with trait training, we're trying to make sure that we, you know, get people to um, have the right mindset for safety, coaching, um, what their responsibility and accountability would be, what they think is a hazard of this particular area, looking at the you know auditing and maybe taking a site survey of their responsibilities in a facility <coughs> and then we talk about you know uh, what is acceptable unacceptable risks <coughs> what they have to do as a you know a uh, person who's out there like a management or first level supervisor <coughs> and we'll go into you know maybe some situational awareness is what we do when we have this situation and then talk about, you know, why they want to follow the safety rules. And you'll see it in behavior-based observations, safety leadership workshops. I always tell people, a good worker does not make a good supervisor. They need training. It's not instinctive to be empathetic, to be analytical, to, to be able to counsel people, to give praise, and things like that. And again, uh, other ones you can do is human factor training, risk awareness, decision-making, 
and then coaching on focus on accountability and ownership. And then situational leadership done by Hershey Blanchard, uh, you adapt the style based on the situation. And I always recommend there's there's videos on it on uh, social media and YouTube. Uh, but again, you're trying to talk about the different styles because a new person might be directed or S1 they call it and then you might coach your high performers and then support the senior people and sometimes you just have to delegate the, the people who could do everything you, okay I need you to do this and they say okay fine and they'll do it right and not, you don't have to even really be there but again you're gonna have to have the traits to recognize these issues and and then how to process you know you know suggest to do this and not just follow procedures Again, tra training is the muscle behind the situational. Again, you don't learn a lot of things like emotional intelligence, judgment, situations, unless you've had some training. Most people don't have that skill. That's why, hence, they go through management training quite a bit. And again, communication skills. If you're not a trainer, it's terrifying. So you have to work with people that help you get better at speaking. You know, there's nothing like showing a simple 90 second of video of you training and you can see if that person's good or bad. And that's what trait training is going to go on there. Help build the capability to allow you to choose the right style at the right time. And I, I go with Caterpillar because I've been, you know, I've done a lot of work with Caterpillar and I've watched their, their management program. You know, they talk about, you know, how to coach, how to give feedback, um, involving employees and everything else, recognizing issues that come up. And, you know, they're very much... You know, you may not have that experience, but we're going to coach you about issues you have to deal with from spray paint boost to welding to, to issues of manufacturing. And again, awareness, judgment, and leadership presence because you're going to be, you know, the leader on the floor. All right, that's it for today. I know it's a little longer, but it is a topic that's getting a lot of uh, tough questions in it lately. We'll see you tomorrow.